Hi, and welcome back to today's second game of Beat the Q. I am your host, Blake Rozier. How's it going, guys? I hope you're having a great night. Say hello in the chat and let me know where you guys are from, okay? Hey, what's up, Tony D? Andrea Lewis and Okie Dokie Boy. I see you guys. Cool. Keep chatting. All right, guys, it's Friday, February 9th, National Bagel Day. And earlier I mentioned it's also National Pizza Day. So basically today is all about carbs. So make sure to treat yourself. Diets be damned. Speaking of treats, you're in for one with this game of Beat the Q. To play, you need to be logged into your Top Buzz or Buzz Video account. And you should update that thing to the current version. Shoutouts to V5.0.1. Yeah. If you don't have an account, close out of this game and create one using your Facebook, Twitter, or Gmail, and then just tap that Beat the queue to come back and play with us. That's the only way to participate. Oh, I'm here. So, guys, yeah, the rules are you, simple. Yeah. I will provide you with 12 trivia questions, and you will try to answer them correctly. You do this by tapping your answer on the screen. You have 10 seconds to answer, and once you've made your selection, so you, you can't change it. That is your selection. So, if you answer all the questions correctly, you will win or split our grand prize. But as soon as you get a question wrong, you are eliminated. You are out of there. So today you'll be playing for a slice of $2,500. Here we go. $2,500? Can you even begin to imagine how many bagels you could buy with that kind of dough? All right, guys, some helpful tips before we start. One, plug your phone in if the battery is low. Two, make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi. Three, make sure you're logged on. Four, play with friends. And five, have a good time. Cool. If you refer a friend to Beat the Q, you'll get an extra life. That means you can stay in the game long. So share that eight-digit referral code with friends. All right, where are my friends at? Let's see. Errol Holmes, what's up from Dallas, Texas? I've been there before. Mariah Jackson, Rhode Island. Thanks for playing, guys. Okay, team, let's hop on board the quiz bus because we're about to make 12 stops in Question Town, starting Here we go. now. Here we go. Crayola is most known for its line of Crayola. crazy glue, crayons, Some of it. or crawfish. All right, go ahead and answer below. What do you think? Go ahead and pick. So what does Crayola make? No need to wax poetic about it. We all know the answer is crayons. Crayola made their first crayons back in 1903 and now sells 3 million crayons a year. That's 12 million a day. Who knew there were that many living room walls to draw on? I surely didn't. I got to get to work, okay? Sorry, Mom. Okay, and... All right, it looks like most of you drew the right conclusions with 8,000 getting it right. So let's keep it going with the next question. What is the most popular and most... Oh, no. popular yeah. well i'd like to think that a quiz qualifies as a sport so my dad would finally be proud of me <laughs> i'm afraid beat the Q doesn't quite make the cut and rollerball is actually a made-up sport from a 1975 movie which was kind of like the hunger games except on skates and with less jennifer lawrence that's right the answer is soccer Many of you may know that in Europe, soccer is called football, right the while well, they call the our question. version of football that game where Americans smash into each other. And it looks like most of you scored a goal with this question. Scored a goal. All right. That's About 8,000 of you guys got it right. Very good. Let's keep this ball rolling with question three. What title does Dracula hold? Count. King, President, count. or Count? Go ahead and pick. Count Dracula. Got it's it? Count, count. That's right. Well, Dracula is known for sucking blood, the one thing he doesn't suck on is the government teat. He has a job, y'all, okay? Well, what kind of, he's, he has a title, so what, what, what is it? If you remember the Dracula-looking Muppet on Sesame Street, you'll have your answer, which is as easy as one, two, three, oh, 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 oh. Yep, yep, he's a count. The Count on Sesame Street is actually based on actor Bela Lugosi version of Dracula from 1931. And speaking of counts, I can count how many of you got that one right. That's funny, right? Okay, looks like just over 7,000 got it right. So let's keep this game going and remember to be nice in the chat or else Sesame Street didn't teach you anything, dude. So get it on DVDs and rewatch it. 
Question four. Which one of these is not a child of Michelle and Barack Obama? Malia, Barack Jr., or Sasha? Is it Sasha? All right. It might be Barack. Oh, I think? think it's Barack Jr. I Since Barack and Michelle only have two children, which one of these three don't girls. belong? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, in 2009, the company that makes Beanie Babies, I love them, was accused of cashing in when they started selling dolls named after Jr. the Obama kids. Good thing we Their names? <laughs> Sasha... And Malia, which means the answer is Barack Jr. Yes, Obama never had a son, but if you have a soul, Sasha or Malia doll, unlike most Beanie Babies, it might actually be worth something since they were immediately pulled from the shelf. So sell it now or forever hold your peace. It looks like a lot of you got that one right, but if you're already out of the game, remember to refer a friend. So the next time you'll have an extra life and can stay in this game a bit longer. All right, so let's keep beating the queue with question five. The Treaty of Versailles ended which war? World War One, World War Two, or the Vietnam War? Hmm. Versailles. That, Go ahead that pick. Like you got this one. I don't know. So what war did the Treaty of Versailles bring to an end? Well, it was a world war, but it wasn't the second one. It was the OG. That's oh, right. The no. answer is World War One. Yeah. Sorry about that. Signed in 1919, the treaty finally brought peace between Germany and the rest of the world five years after the war started. Luckily, we would never have problems with the Germans again. And it looks like we've suffered a few casualties with this last question. Oh, man. Looks like just over 3,000 of you got that wrong. Ugh. Okay, well, that's all right, guys. Um, looks like almost 3,500 of you got it right. Um, you guys won the battle, but not the war, as we soldier on to question six. Here we go. Yeah, no. A library inside a bus is called a reading race car, a bookmobile, a bookmobile or a crime against nature. Ah, uh, yes. A library in a bus. I remember that classic Keanu Reeves movie, Speed Reading, where if they dropped below reading 50 words a minute, the bus would explode. Such a nice classic. And, and what did it take place on? You remember? Dang. A bookmobile. The first portable libraries were pulled by horse in the 1800s, but soon books started hopping on buses so that communities without libraries could still read Fifty Shades of Grey on a bus. And if you answered correctly, you're going to book it over to our next question. You are halfway there to winning. Beat the queue. Give it up for yourselves. Nice. All right, question seven. Who are Athos, Porthos, and Aramis? The Three Amigos, the Three Musketeers, or the Three Wise Men? Hmm, which one is it? A, B, or C? Which one? So, what do these three men have in common besides super fancy names? If you chose Wise Men, I'm afraid that was not so wise. And if you picked the Three Amigos, you're not going to want to be my friend because the answer is the Three Musketeers! The Three Musketeers was first published as a book in 1844 and went on to inspire dozens of movies, but most importantly, a delicious candy bar. Oh my gosh, it's the best thing on this earth. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, it looks like many, uh, many of you took a bite out of the right answer with just under 3,000 of you choosing wisely. But if you were eliminated, come hang out with us on Twitter at BTQ Official. Join our new followers. We got Chris Gentner. What's up, dude? Miss GP. Holler. And Dylan, what's up? Dylan, what's up? That's a really cool Twitter name. Very cool. Okay, guys. So on to question eight. Which artist famously wore a dress made of meat? Ed Sheeran? Bjork? Or Lady Gaga? Which one of those wore a meat dress? I know it wasn't Ed Sheeran. So which of these singers decided to step out and stake? Is, well, Ed Sheeran no. is known for his smooth voice. The edgiest he gets is eating pizza without utensils. And while Bjork is known for being bonkers, it was her Lady swan Gaga. dress that got people talking in 2001. Yes, the answer is Lady Gaga, who wore the infamous meat dress in 2010 at the MTV Music Awards. Gaga later donated the dress to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where it was preserved as, no joke, beef jerky. Okay, let's see yeah. who got it right. Okay, really low very good, guys. All you guys who got it right, very good. We got 3,300 of you that got it right. Good job. But it looks like this meat question left a few of you burned. Sorry. 
Um, for those of you still in the game, let me grill you with this next question. You guys like these jokes? Good. I love them. Question nine. Which genre of dance music is generally associated with the 1970s? EDM, disco, or swing? No, it's 1920s. EDM, disco, or swing? <laughs> Think about with it. Swing. Got it? Yeah, disco. All right, so which of these dance styles went best with shag carpeting and bell bottoms? Well, EDM stands for electronic dance music and didn't start earning rave reviews until the late 2000s. And although Gap clothing got people excited for swing music for like five minutes in the 90s, the dance had its real heyday in the 1920s. So, yes, the answer is disco. The music and dance style exploded onto the scene in the 1970s, but not everyone was a fan. But I was and still am. I have bell bottoms. In 1979, half a million people showed up to a Chicago stadium to burn disco records. And it did not go well. It stunk. All right, let's see. 3,200 of you guys got that right. Good job. What? And while this question has some of you dancing your last dance, it looks like most of you are staying alive. Like I said, 3,200 of you getting it right. That's awesome. Let's boogie on over to question 10. We're almost there. Which animal is on the packaging of fruit stripe gum? Zebra? Leopard? Or tiger? Zebra. What do you think? Think back to yesteryear. The gum has been around since 1959, but which masticating mascot is on the package? Mm -hmm. Guys, if you answered leopard, I'm afraid your chances of winning are spotty at best. That's funny, right? And while a tiger has stripes, I'd be lying, like the animal, funny, if I said that was right, because the answer is zebra, guys. Dudes, the zebra goes by the name Yipes and is often shown doing things like shooting basketballs, kicking soccer balls, and getting TMJ in his jaw from chewing too much. Ouch. Poor zebra. Luckily, it looks like this question only gummed things up for a few of you with a lot of players staying strong. Which is good because we're in the home stretch, baby. Question 11. Yes. Here we go. Which of these is not a branch of government? Judicial? Economic or legislative? Hmm. Do you remember this? So which of these branches doesn't belong on the government tree? Well, the government is made up of three separate branches. The judicial, the executive, and the legislative. That means economic is the right answer. Yes, while the economy is an important part of our lives, it's not a branch of the government. At least not yet, because... Who knows what will happen because 2018 is crazy. What is happening? Congratulations on making it as far because the moment has come. It's time for the final question, y'all. I was all excited, too, because I thought I had it. Those of you who answer this next question right will be splitting our sweet, sweet $2,500 prize. So let's find out who is going to beat the queue. Final question. Ready? Survival of the fittest is a phrase closely associated with what theory? Theory of relativity, Big Bang theory, or natural selection? All right, really think on this one. Last question. All right, so what is the right answer? While all three of these theories sound like comedy shows on CBS, the answer is not the Big Bang Theory or the theory of relativity. It is natural selection. Charles Darwin came up with the theory in 1859, which went on to inspire a whole line of bumper stickers of fish with little feet. Really cute. And it looks like many of you are Dar winning this game. Hit you with a joke. But I didn't have an extra life. Probably 80 cents, 90 cents. 92 cents. <laughs> hey guys, and don't worry, if you see your prize is zero, you might have still won. You probably did. Anything below 99 cents is still a winner, so check it out.